am very unprepped in here. I don't know how this mic works. Guys, say hi to yourselves. Hola a todos. Hoy estoy grabando con una nueva cámara porque yo y mi mamá estamos en Valencia, así que no tengo mi otra cámara. Anyway, I'm going to get straight into it because I have had so many issues with my camera today, so I'm just going to I'm just going to move on. But today I wanted to do a Q&A because a few days ago I posted like a getting my life together on Notion because my life feels like a mess type video and a lot of people DM'd me and asked me some questions about how I'm feeling about my gap year, why am I feeling lost, that type of thing and then I realized I have not given you guys a proper update since the first video about me taking my gap year I don't know why I did this because it, I did take a gap year Anyway, it's been three months so this is like a perfect time to get an opinion because I will probably have a different opinion in three months and then I will probably have a different opinion in a year. But also not just on uni, just like on everything. There's another little thing that I'm considering doing this year, which is going to be like a big life change that I'm going to mention in today's video as well. Today, we're basically just going to catch up. We are going to get straight into it because we got a lot of questions. I asked you guys to ask me questions on Instagram, which by the way, not to be like self promo, but I'm so much more active on there and not just like with random life content with life content too, but also like productivity content. Like I really, really love Instagram stories recently and I've been putting a lot more effort into them recently. So personally, I would say to go check them out. So before we go on with the questions, I want to take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. So if you've not heard me talk about Skillshare before, it's basically like an online learning community for people who are trying to learn skills like photography, digital design, business, knitting, video editing, literally. Any skill you can think of will be on Skillshare. I have a class on Skillshare, which has over 16,000 students. So if you're a person that wants to learn about Notion, I would personally recommend taking my class. <laughs> I really, really love Skillshare's variety of classes. Like literally, like I said, any skill you could think of, you could probably learn on Skillshare. For me right now, I started a new hobby recently, which is very random. You're gonna see it in some weekly vlogs, but I recently started crocheting. I don't know why, I kept seeing it as like, I want to do it, but I didn't know where to start. So I found this class called Modern Crochet Essential Skills for Getting Started by Tony Lipsy. And it's really, really good. It's really interesting. I really like how it's broken down because basically Skillshare classes, they're broken down into like little sections so that like you're not overwhelmed by like a one hour long video. It's like very manageable bite-sized lessons. Also very time efficient. Like if you feel like, oh, I don't have time to do like a one hour class, then you can break it down to like, okay, I'm gonna do 10 minutes a day. So if you're interested in joining Skillshare, make sure to go to my description box because the first 1,000 people that join with my link or join with the code links will get a month for free. So it is a really good deal. And while you're at it, you can watch my class. Anyway, let's get back to the questions. So the first question we have that is the most on theme one is, are you planning to go back to uni? This is like a vague answer, but also quite a definite one. Basically the answer is, probably not like mentally i feel like i've decided the only thing is that i haven't like officially dropped out and a lot of people are confused and i fully understand why because for example on tiktok i posted a tiktok where i basically said i've dropped out but i was kind of testing the waters not because i wanted to know what people would think because like i don't really care like even if people start being rude or if people support it either way i'm gonna make the same decision but i just kind of wanted to see like okay what are people gonna say I got a lot of mixed responses. A lot of people were like, uh, mm, that is the dumbest decision you're ever gonna make in your life. And I'm gonna be like, but basically on that TikTok that I posted, a lot of people were saying stuff like, this is the dumbest decision you're ever gonna make. Like, how can you not be in education? Like, I feel like there are a few comments that can like trigger me a little bit, but those specific comments really don't trigger me because as I see it, they come from a very small minded place. Not that the person themselves is small minded, but when it comes to this topic, they have a lot of fear and they're projecting that fear onto me, even though I don't have that fear anymore because I am dropping out. So obviously I'm not that scared to do that. They're like, oh my God, you can't succeed without university. She's going to fail. So they're projecting it onto me, which is where those hateful comments come from. So I'm honestly not very hurt by them, but I do want to clarify a few things. University is not the only place you can get education. It is very much not the only place you can get education. It's the only place that will get you a diploma that is recognized internationally, maybe. Okay, I will agree with that, but it is not necessary. Unless you're planning to become like a doctor or a lawyer or a vet, like jobs that actually legally require you to go to university, I understand. But with a lot of other jobs, there's always other options. That's the first thing I wanna say. Second thing I wanna say, People think if I drop out of uni, I'm never going back to uni. But that is not the case. Just because I dropped out doesn't mean I can't go back. 
it does mean I won't go back to London University because the only reason I went to London was because I was in the last year of like Brexit so I could still get the home fees so we paid 9,000 per year whereas if I went to university now in London like if I was applying now since I'm a European Union citizen I would be paying like 30,000 a year so yes me dropping out means that I will probably not go back to university in the UK but it doesn't mean I will never go back to university and the third thing I want to say is that there's always alternatives to university if I do decide that I do want to work in the tech industry if I do decide that that is my path and that is what I want to do I would most likely prefer to go to a coding boot camp but basically I just wanted to explain like that is why I'm not stressed because first of all I can always come back and second of all I would probably not even come back because I would go into an alternative way but that's even if I want to pursue computer science anyway that was a very long answer but I feel like that was a good detailed answer for you guys I just feel like a lot of people think university is the only way to go and I'm not saying this from a place of university is a complete I have said before university is a scam but I meant in my specific case like for computer science it's really not necessary and like for the price we pay I have no issues with university but just for me in this certain moment of my life it doesn't seem like the right path so the next question this is a deep one do you have any regrets in life I wanted to answer this question because I'm trying this new mindset because I feel like I really need it right now but recently I'm trying to not regret anything in life it's such a useless feeling and like I know that sounds really dumb because it's like well you can't just get rid of it like if you regret it that's just how you feel and I agree with that but you can try if something has already happened you gained an experience from it and you probably learned what to do what to not do it is in its own way kind of a lesson since this question was asked I'm going to tell you two things that I've had trouble letting go of so like everything else i honestly like anytime something happens that i'm not happy with i don't regret it anymore i feel like i'm done really well with my habits of regrets but there are two things that i'm still struggling to let go of and i'll just mention them now the first thing is just me kind of regretting my money management habits last year and the beginning of this year but from that feeling i'm now learning to manage my money and i'm getting better at it with time <laughs> I was so confused. Oh, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> and the second thing is in 2017, I did an exchanger in Spain. And actually, you can see this regret happening in real time because my first ever weekly vlog that I ever filmed was the week that I'm about to tell you guys. Basically, my last ever week in Spain, I filmed a weekly vlog. And in that weekly vlog, I was like, ooh, it's my last week of school. Let me do some grammar exercises. And when I did those grammar exercises, I realized like, oh my god, what I just learned in a 10 minute grammar class, I've been struggling with this little thing for the whole of my exchange year and it was so easy to learn. I really didn't put in enough work during my exchange year. I was really stressed out and I was like, you know what, like I'm not gonna bother trying to learn Spanish. I'm just gonna learn it naturally. Like I'm just gonna absorb it. I'm not gonna like sit here and do Spanish grammar. And I really regretted that. When I came back from Spain, I really regretted that because I was like, I had the most amazing opportunity to make friends with people, to go to school speaking Spanish. And I didn't really take it because I didn't bother studying at home. I was just like, nah, I'll just absorb it. That's like the only thing that like irks me like, oh, I know that answer was very counterproductive because I started by saying I don't I'm trying not to think of anything as a regret and then I just told you one but I'm just being honest that of course I still have some but I'm really trying to not think that way anymore so the next question is what are your plan after uni or what is your plan if you drop out of uni so the person just asked what is your plan after uni but since I'm like I said I'm most likely gonna drop out I'm gonna tell you what my plan is most likely for when I drop out so basically I started thinking about it this way I was like okay let's say for example I drop out and I'm going to be living in London which is a place with horrible weather and for me weather is a big thing when it comes to the place I live it really affects my mood so I was gonna say I'm living in London with weather that I hate paying extremely high rent and also like living with an extreme cost of life in general, not just rent, just like for everything. It's everything is really expensive in London. And I was like, 
what is the point? What is actually holding me hostage in London? Why am I even, what is the point of staying there? Apart from friends, what is the point of staying there? So if I'm now not staying there because of university and I'm also not looking for career opportunities in that field, what am I really there for? So I started thinking about it. I was like, hmm, hmm, maybe I could move. I don't know, like what are my options? And I started looking at a lot of different places. I've literally looked everywhere. I've done so much research. It's not normal. I was very, 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 very between two cities, specifically two cities. Well, two countries, but like it wasn't just any city in the countries. It was specifically two cities. And those two cities were Lisbon and Barcelona. So if I do end up moving one day, I'll make like a full video about this to like tell you guys how I decided. But to give you guys a very brief summary, by the way, you would have known about all of this three weeks ago if you guys were on my Telegram channel. The things I share on Telegram, I do not share them on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. I don't share them anywhere. Like Telegram is like my private, it's like my close friends. When it was between Lisbon and Barcelona, there was two main factors that was the like deciding factors and basically both of them are beautiful. I love both of them. I've never been in Lisbon, but I can tell that I would like it a lot. Barcelona, however, I've literally from childhood, I've had some attachment to Spain and the Spanish language like my whole life. I think it must be because like I used to visit my cousins every single year and my cousins are Spanish. So I just had like a little bit of Spanish with me my whole life. So I've always been really obsessed with the idea of living in Spain. So Barcelona had my heart, but Lisbon had my head. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, but basically it's not a good thing maybe to think about this, but when it comes to taxes, Spain has one of the highest rates of taxes for Europe. And Lisbon, when you join with a specific tax regime, which I'm not gonna get into, but this is like, for people living in Lisbon, you might be like, no, our taxes aren't low, but there's a specific like tax exception if you're a foreigner. But in Lisbon, for my specific job and what I currently do, the taxes would basically be non-existent, but still fully legal, obviously. And I just, I could not decide. I am very much more likely to move to Barcelona. So if I do end up moving, I will be moving to Barcelona. So that is my plan for after this year. I was gonna say that's a little life update, but that's kind of a big life update because watch me have like a I'm moving to Barcelona vlog in like seven months like it's so possible so the next question is very related but someone asked what are your traveling plans for the year so in January I went to Brazil I feel like a lot of people on YouTube won't even know that because I never posted anything on YouTube this is why you should follow me on Instagram because I posted so much about it I went to Brazil by myself like I literally decided the day before I bought my tickets like 11 hours before the flight. I had absolutely no plans to go to Brazil so soon. I was sitting in a cafe and I was working and I was like, I wanna go to Brazil. I wanna go to Brazil tomorrow. And I bought tickets and it was it was insane. I went for a week, I went alone, which was kind of scary because it was my first ever solo traveling. And usually when people go solo traveling on their own, they go to like a country near them, you know, like they start slow. No, I went to a new continent. Now I'm in Valencia in two weeks, no, in three weeks, I'm going to Turkey, which I'm really, really excited for. I'm going on like a group trip. So I've never met anyone on this trip so far. Like it's not people I know, but it's also not solo, which is perfect. So it's like, I'm going to meet a lot of new people, but like it's people that I'm going to stay with for the whole trip. So it's like literally perfect. I'm super excited. A lot of people also commented on that video asking me where in Turkey I'm going, but we're going everywhere. And then in May, I have tickets for Lisbon and Madrid, but I don't know if that's happening yet. During the summer, I really want to go interrailing. Like I want to visit like five new countries because honestly, like I've not been in that many European countries, which is quite crazy. My camera gave up. Okay, so the next question is, why didn't you pursue a language degree if that is your passion? So if you are not new here, you would know that language learning is my favorite hobby of all time. To me, it's so fun. And I've gotten this question before. They were like, it doesn't make sense. If you love languages so much, why don't you get a degree for it? And my answer is very simple. So basically when you go to university, most of the time it's to get a diploma to be able to work in that field, which is how universities usually work. But sometimes of course there's exceptions. Like I know there's people that have done linguistics that go on to like do business or like completely something unrelated. But most of the time, if you're going to do a language degree, for example, just like a linguistics degree, or you're doing like Spanish with French, most of the time you're either gonna go into translation, 
journalism, teaching, and a few more, but I feel like those are like the main three. For me, as much as I love those careers, I just don't feel like they're for me at all. I don't think I would enjoy them as much. So that is a very simple answer, but it's basically like, I love languages. I love, 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 love learning languages, but I don't want it to become a career. And yeah, those are all the questions that have come up a lot recently. Let me know if you want to know anything else. Maybe I can like answer some questions in the comments. Obviously they won't be as detailed, but I'd be happy to like talk to you guys in the comments. Like if you have like a very specific little question, let me know. I'd be happy to talk about it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope the audio was okay. I'm worried that it wasn't, but I'm praying it was okay. But yeah, I will see you guys next time.